Hello, this is Benjamin from the Zephyr project. Uh, today I want to show you something that uh, was just added to Zephyr, which is the ability to uh, run code checker whenever you build um, your Zephyr application. Uh, you can use Code Checker, which is an open source uh, static analysis tool, which I believe uh, is developed by Ericsson, at least originally, uh, to look for potential bugs in your code uh, and more generally make sure that it, uh, it conforms to whatever um, guidelines and best practices you want to enforce in your organization. So we will go through a quick demo. Uh, the, the tool is actually really, really uh, cool and really impressive. But uh, yeah, in a nutshell, um, it's based on Clang. So it um, like most of the, um, the analysis that it performs uh, is uh, by leveraging uh, the Clang infrastructure. And that way, it can actually extract some uh, really deep knowledge of the code. And so yeah, we are gonna like I've already installed um, the tool on my machine, and I will just go through the instructions. Uh, but one thing that's worth highlighting already is that uh, it's one of those tools where it's really, really flexible in terms of what um, what are the kind of things that it's uh, able to check, and you can decide uh, again based on like your best practices in your organizations and whatnot what it is that you want to enable or not, right? And there's tons of different. Uh, rules uh, for uh, all sorts of uh, patterns and uh, some, uh, and then and then then some, right? And then more uh, for some of them, and we will see that uh, the tool is even able to um, provide you with uh, fixes and suggestions how to fix uh, things. It's most of the times it will be uh, it won't fix bugs for you, but it's more like whenever there is a um, some. Um, code style that's not ideal, uh, it's uh, able to provide you with a, um, a, better, um, a better way to do things. So yeah, without further ado, uh, let's go ahead and do a, a quick demo. So um, if you yeah, check out the documentation page uh, that, that was just added, it will uh, tell you what you have to do, which is not much. Uh, basically, installing Code Checker um, is something that you can do easily. It comes as a, a Python package. And as soon as you've done that, uh, the most like basic uh, sample and the, the simplest way to run a code checker for your particular application is to simply build it by adding uh, this particular, uh, passing those flags to, uh, to CMake, um, essentially. And so by doing that, you're telling West that it should build your app. And once it's done, it should look at all the files that make up your app and uh, run uh, the code checker with the default rules um, against it. So let's do just that. So this is uh, yeah, this is my Zephyr repo. Uh, it's actually fresh off. Uh, like uh, I'm uh, developing uh, off of main, and um, I want to check whether my hello world. Um, looks all right when it comes to uh, being uh, compliant to the default code checker rules. And so uh, what was the command? Uh, West build, name of the board, name of the uh, application that I want to build, and then uh, this. So yeah, I think I have that somewhere in my um, history. There we go. So let's assume that I'm building the hello world, uh, the Zephyr hello world for Wii terminal. Um, and that's it. So let's do just that. It might take slightly longer than uh, your typical compilation. And I think it actually says that somewhere uh, in the um, in the tool, uh, in the documentation of the tool, uh, it, it, yeah, it runs really, really uh, powerful and complex uh, checks. So it's going to take way longer than uh, just compiling the code. Uh, but that's kind of expected, I guess. Uh, and there we go. We have uh, a fair amount of things that were reported. There might be some false positives there. Uh, but what do we do now? Uh, we probably have somewhere in our build folder. Um, yeah, we do have some report. Like uh, This guy is actually uh, this p, p list uh, um, file is a, an XML file, which is the sort of the row, uh, the main report, uh, but we could actually turn it into something slightly more uh, human readable. We could uh, decide that we want to export the um, the report in the form of uh, an HTML report, maybe, uh, or uh, something um, 
I'm pretty sure there's one of those formats, which is something that you can feed into, uh, say, uh, GitHub, uh, so that whenever you run a GitHub action, you would have um, like actual uh, the actual report surfacing in your um, in your CI/CD pipeline. But yeah, I, I could definitely do that. Uh, but one thing that's even more powerful, in my opinion, is to leverage the fact that Code Checker is not only uh, a CLI tool, but it's also, it comes with a web server, which is super powerful. Like think of uh, like the kind of tool that you would have all your developers uh, logging into uh, to see where things are at with regards to um, uh, maybe, th I mean, things like code coverage, etc. which, well, Code Checker doesn't do, but how is the code uh, looking like in terms of how many warnings do we have? What's the, how many um, uh, red super important errors do we have how many of them are just like would be nice to fix but it's uh, we can live with those so yeah let's i'll just shut up and just show you right so the um the server i have it running uh on my machine and so those results the p list um file is um i can actually st like store the um the results of whatever is in the plist file and i can instruct code checker that it should load that in the form of um, zephyr hello world um, app uh, like that's the name of my run right of the of the uh, of the report uh, and um yeah and i want to clean up the the file paths as well i mean you can check out the documentation of course of code checker to see what are the various options there but um yeah that's it uh import it going back to um my browser this is the code checker ui if i refresh this page i should see my yeah that's the run and um it tells me a bunch of things uh, among which the fact that for this particular application, there's new, uh, there's 300 plus new uh, unresolved reports. So maybe we want to check them, right? And it turns out uh, that many of them are actually like warnings um, and like potential smells again in the Zephyr code base itself. Uh, I'm not 100% sure, but like. 99% of those uh, are very likely false positives, which by the way, the tool um, allows you to flag, right? You can do that once and um, it won't ever complain uh, again, right? It, it actually, uh, from one run to the other, uh, it knows what changes and what doesn't. Uh, I guess in my particular um, case, what I want to make sure of is that my, like the actual Halo world doesn't have any uh, problems with it. And it looks like it doesn't, so that's great. Uh, but maybe I want to play uh, uh, play a, play a bit and just mess up with my Halo world and try to introduce some potential bugs or things that the tool will um, tell me are possibly bugs. So to do that, I'm going to open VS Code for my um, Halo world application. There it is. Um, and I'm going to try and introduce a, a few bugs. Um, let's see. I have a, uh, an integer variable. I have another one. Well, actually, I have GitHub code, uh, Copilot kicking in. So that's interesting whether AI will compete with um, my intention to deliberately introduce a bug. But what I want to do is um, introduce a variable, which, by the way, is likely going to end up being unused so we'll see if this is going to be uh, flagged as well but uh yeah let's see i want to do yeah i'm really really smart i want to do um uh, i minus j minus 16. i don't know if you can spot the bug but i'm pretty sure there is one uh let's see so that's my new hell world the one that probably doesn't work all that well um compiling once more uh where was that build there we go. Um, it's very likely, actually, that West, um, right at the compiling phase, will um, uh, and CMake will, will already um, surface some errors. Yeah, the unused variable, it's actually like one of those compilation flags that's already there, uh, enabled by default when you build a Zephyr app. 
but there's more to it, right? I think it's more than that. K, uh, I'm not even sure we can compute K with uh, what I did. Um, so let's see. Yeah, the run is done. I'm going to load uh, the results just like I did before. Going back to the server, refreshing the same page as earlier. Now we have two runs. Uh, the one I did uh, three minutes ago, the new one. At the top level, it's giving me this high level overview, which uh, there should be a tooltip. I don't know for, uh, why it doesn't show up. Yeah, there we go. There's three new bugs. What are those? I think I can actually click on them directly. There's three. Uh, one is a low priority, one is medium, one is high. And so I can actually go and look directly at the file and see what are those. So yeah, unused variable, we knew that. Uh, it actually tells me that uh, in two different ways. It also tells me that I initialize something that ends up never being read. Uh, it's kind of the same, but whatever. And there's a high priority error. And this one says, oh, you're entering main, going through printf, then doing some stuff. And then this path, essentially this execution path, leads to a division by zero, uh, which uh, was something that uh, the tool can uh, could spot by just doing static code analysis. So I could do a bunch of things. I could uh, um, say that it's uh, a false positive, that it's intentional, whatever. Uh, I could leave a comment for my coworkers. I could look at um, the git blame to see who introduced the bug. Uh, for some reason, it doesn't look like it's uh, doing it properly because this is net new code. It shouldn't match uh, git commits, but uh, you see the idea. Uh, the, um, the point here is not to do an in-depth demo of the tool, but just to show you um, just a bit. And uh, we'll do one more thing, actually, which is I said that in some cases, it actually tells you um, and provides you with potential fixes for the code. Uh, so not necessarily for bugs, like I don't know how the tool would even like suggest a fix for this. Uh, but for things like, I don't know, like um, in your organization, whenever someone, uh, I don't know, someone does this, like adds a to-do in the code, uh, you may or may not want to-dos to end up in the committed code um, and, and in, in the code that's being checked into your repo. Or maybe you do, uh, but it turns out there's one rule in code checker that can help with, um, identifying those uh, to-dos that you may not want to have. And um, yeah, I'm actually gonna enable the rule and that's also a way for me to show you uh, the part of the documentation that explains that you may want to, um, I mean, you can play with the code checker analyze opts to pass custom um, options, which is exactly what I'm gonna do. So running, uh, yeah, going for a third run here, a third build, and I'm going to add something that I have on the side that I have co uh, just copy pasted. Yeah, uh, adding and enabling a couple new rules. Uh, all the rules that belong to the sensitive profile in Code Checker, plus the, the one rule uh, that uh, looks at to dos and makes some recommendations regarding to dos. Uh, yeah, compiling for the third time. Um, Let's see how this goes. We probably, yeah, um, yeah. Let's just wait for a bit. We're gonna then load uh, the, uh, yeah, still the nasty uh, uh, divide by zero error there. Um, it's gonna take slightly longer because we're running more checks. Uh, all the ones from the, uh, yeah, the profile I've enabled. Yeah, a few more errors, right? Uh, loading the the session in the server, in the server's database, going back to the viewer, going back to the different runs. Oh, that's now over 200 net new errors, which we could actually see as a graph. And I mean, again, you know that, you, you get the idea. But uh, what are all those errors? Uh, yeah, well, a bunch of those are due to the, the new profile, the sensitive profile that I enabled. But this one is actually the Google readability to do uh, thing. This one says, hey, you shouldn't have, like whenever you have a to-do, to-do is fine, but the to-do should have the name of whoever is gonna eventually take care of 
fixing the thing. Uh, and you can have more information regarding the rule, blah, blah, blah. So this one, you can actually automatically apply a fix. And how does that work? Um, you effectively, uh, and I wanna actually just change my uh, layout just a bit to make sure that you actually see what's gonna be going on. And how does that work? Uh, essentially, you can call uh, the, um, yeah, the code checker CLI with the, um, the fix it command. And so that's um, effectively, you wanna tell code checker, hey, based on this report, whatever suggestions that are there, um, um, apply them, right? And so uh, I can do a dry run first, and it actually tells me, hey, that's the file or the files that I would be fixing, and those are the fixes. And if you pay attention to VS Code and uh, the file that I have open in the background, if now I apply the uh, suggestion, then I end up with code that uh, now um, is okay with regards to whatever rules and guidelines uh, you have in place. So with that, that was my demo for today, which uh, like I cannot promise that every week um, for the um, Zephyr Weekly update, I will provide you with this kind of live demo. But for this week, uh, I thought it was really uh, worthwhile to spend the time uh, going through Code Checker. I hope you will um, use the opportunity to try it out. Uh, it, like you saw, it's really, really easy to enable. You might need to tinker a bit and to play with the uh, the rules that you want to enable for your particular project and organization. Uh, but uh, everything else, everything else is taken care of uh, behind the scenes. Uh, yeah, really, really powerful tool. With that, uh, take care, and we will talk soon. Bye.